versus battle went pretty much exactly how I thought it would. These are two trap rappers from Atlanta, yet there's a difference here. Gucci runs the street. He birthed an entire sound from his start on the rap scene. He birthed an entire gang of rappers to come after him. Jeezy somewhat runs the mainstream trap music era. And I say somewhat because he's kind of neck and neck with T.I., which honestly is who I would have rather seen him go up against in this battle. But although Gucci and Jeezy are from the same city, they make the same type of music, their styles, their demeanor, the sound, it all hits very different. And I think that's important to note going into this battle. Nonetheless, we all knew this versus this night would be epic mainly because the long-standing beef between these two rappers had us wondering how in the hell they were even going to be in the same room but lo and behold both rappers confirmed that this night was happening it's fashion a part of the verses because i'm gonna have that shit on tomorrow and the butt had the same fun ass shirt and the dumb ass head he had on the goddamn album cover i ain't doing it and we all prepared ourselves accordingly so we get there the stage is set in Magic City of Atlanta and the DJs, the DJs. Let me tell you something, this night was so Atlanta. DJ Holiday had it going up before the show even began. Like his mix was perfect. He had classic Atlanta blending with the newest and latest from all regions and it was just mixed so perfectly it had me really ready to be standing on somebody's couch smoking somebody's hookah and doing ratchet stuff with my friends I just really <sighs> but the mood was set we was jamming and we was waiting and we was jamming and we was waiting and we was jamming and we was waiting and we was waiting and we was jamming and god damn is it just gonna start like <laughs> i think the show was supposed to start at eight it definitely didn't start until like a little bit after nine i think i saw swiss beats mention something about niggas getting covid tests on the scene finally after an awkward pop-up from stacy abrams i really don't understand why politics keep being inserted into everything. Um, in what world does it make sense for politicians to be at an event where we listen to the niggas rap about guns and drugs? But hey, what do I know? But anyway, finally, Jeezy and Gucci come out and these niggas look like they are ready for a boxing match instead of a rap battle. But in hindsight, it kind of makes sense for them to look like they was ready to box because Gucci literally came out swinging. His first round song was a Jeezy diss. Okay, Gucci, that's the type of time we on. Okay, I see, I see now what this is gonna be. And this energy continued throughout the battle. Gucci ain't have no set list. He didn't have strategy. He literally just played all the most disrespectful songs that would insult Jeezy the most. Every bitch, every hoe ass nigga, every pussy was directed directly at Jeezy. And Jeezy just played all the hits that it made sense to play in a versus battle. And me, I was getting my life the whole time until Gucci dropped that record, that record, that record. You know that record that for the record is not a diss record. The one that some of us hoped he wouldn't play, but most of us saw coming. As soon as he stepped foot on stage, yeah. He played Truth, which is one of the most disrespectful this songs ever with one of the most disrespectful lines that we don't even have to discuss he took it there and it stayed there until it was made clear that Jeezy was not about to let that energy come through 
It sounded like Jeezy was a little disappointed that Gucci played this song, but he was also prepared for it with this heart to heart type speech, which seemed to kind of wave a white flag and attempt to put their beef behind them. All these kids out here doing what the fuck they do, cause they saw what went on with us, dog. So this shit ain't about me, this shit ain't about you. You feel what I'm saying? This shit by King Von, this shit by Dobie, this shit by Nipsey Hussle, this shit by motherfucking Pop Smoke, M3. And I'm real enough to do that, nigga, cause one thing about it, two things for show, three things for certain, nigga. I'm the realest nigga. Gucci was not going for it. But still, I think Jeezy's moment brought a little more balance to the situation and we were all kind of able to loosen our shoulders and breathe a little bit and get back to the music. Thank God. After the madness, they still went on to play more hits. Gucci still had Trap House, he still had Pills. Jeezy still played Thug Motivation 101. And then both rappers came together to perform Icy, which was the most monumental moment of the night. Never in a million years did we think that we would see these two perform that song together. So on paper, this night ended beautifully. But personally, my energy was thrown off at the possibility of an altercation and I never really came back from it. Which really makes me wonder what we actually expected from this situation. Although the outcome seems pretty much on brand for both rappers, I have to question if all parties involved were aware of each other's mindset beforehand. We all know the history. Lives were lost behind this beef. I mean, Gucci said it himself, this is what got Biggie and Tupac killed. This was some real stuff we were dealing with. So for Jeezy to have been in this mature headspace, wanting to put the beef to rest, or at least come together for the public. And Gucci to have just been out for blood. And I don't know if I mean that literally or figuratively. It was a lot. The whole night was just tense. Gucci was not letting up on the insults. Jeezy was trying very hard to be mature. It made sense for who these two rappers are, but it was, it was hard to watch. But still, this versus battle owes me nothing. It was definitely one for the books. I mean, the culture is never going to forget this night. Both men looked so fly and the glow up was just beautiful and niggas is grown and married and I know y'all want to know who I think won. The fact of the matter is these two men were there for two very different reasons and they were playing two different games. I think Gucci did exactly what he set out to do and I think Jeezy did exactly what he set out to do. I think Core Gucci fans are pleased with the night and I think Core Jeezy fans are pleased with the night. I am upset that Jeezy did not play Super Freak and Gucci did not play Freaky Girl. I think now we can all just go to our respective safe places and never do something like this again. See y'all later.